Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Gabby and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in April, May, and June. Okay, so I'm doing this in chronological order, so it'll be in the order that I read them. There's not as many books as I thought there would be because you most people would think, you know, I had three months to read books, but um, in between that, I also had school and, you know, other things that were going on. But I did end up completing 11 books, so for me, that's a win. Um, for somebody who, last year, while I love reading, I don't always get the time to properly dedicate it, and I am a really slow reader, so, um, to be able to read 11 books in three months is really good for me. Last year, I think I only completed, like, 20-ish books for the year, so, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So without further ado, let's just get right in. So the first book that I read was The Iron Flower by Lori Forrest. I have explained what this series, The Black Witch Chronicles, is about um, multiple times, but I'll kind of give you like a, a very quick synopsis. So this is a, this essentially, the, the chronicles follow Ellen Gardner and she is a gardenerian and the gardenerians kind of rule the the like lands they live in, Earth, Earthia, Earthia, and she's a descendant of the Black Witch, and the Black Witch ended up freeing all of the Gardnerians from enslavement years ago, um, and she is her granddaughter, um, or Ellen is her granddaughter, and she ends up going to the university, and the university is a melting pot of all the different races, that some that suppress them, some that are just, that didn't suppress them but didn't do anything about it, and the Gardnerians are very much a racist like society. They very much think that they are, it's kind of like white supremacy. Um, they very much think that they're, you know, the top tier because they're witches or whatever. Um, and they discriminate against all the other different races. Granted, the other races don't particularly like them. It's, it's a really interesting series about that kind of dynamic between different peoples. And it follows her and her kind of learning that the way that the Gardnerians think is completely wrong. And, it's a lot more than that, but that's basically what it is. Um, I think I ended up giving this five stars. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I gave this five stars. If not, I'll write what I actually gave it, but I'm pretty sure I gave this five out of five stars. Um, I absolutely love this series. It's such an underrated series. Um, not many people talk about it, but it's a really good series. Like the last 200 pages, this is like a 600 page, destroyed me. Like I read it in like the last 200 pages in one sitting and that's a lot for me because while I love reading, sometimes I need to take breaks to like kind of absorb what I'm reading as well to just remove myself from the situation for a little bit. And I just sat at my dining room table <laughs> one Sunday and I read the last 200 pages and just they flew by. It was great. Now they destroyed me because they made me cry, but it is such a good series. I'm actually reading the Shadow Wand, which is the third book right now, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, granted, I'm only like 40 pages in, um, and it's interesting because the first two books, I believe, only follows Ellerin's point of view, or it follows Ellerin's and one other person in the second one, maybe? But I think they both follow Ellerin's point of view, but the third one is jumping between all these different points of view because the ending of this book um, made it so that that book, in order to be told better, should have been split up into different point of views. I'm trying to say it without spoiling anything. I hope that, that worked. I absolutely love this series. I absolutely love these books. They're amazing. You should read them. Link in the description below. The next book that I read is My Lady Jane by Lady Janie. So Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is a retelling of Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Days Queen. So if you don't know who that is, in the Tudor time when King Henry died. She ends up being appointed queen. Granted, she's like 16. She's like, I don't understand why I'm here. After nine days, she ends up being beheaded by her cousin, by Mary Tudor, who ends up taking the throne and becoming just as bad as her father. But this kind of follows the events beforehand-ish. It's really funny. Like, if you like cheesy humor, like really cheesy humor, you will enjoy this. If you don't, You'll think it's stupid and like you just won't enjoy it because the majority of this is very much centered on it being just ridiculous. I mean, in this, in the world that they've created, there's Ethians and Verities, and Ethians have the ability to shapeshift into animals, and 
Basically, this follows three different points of view and it follows Edward, who is Jane's cousin and they like are best friends. They absolutely love each other. Like they tell each other everything, but it follows him. Then it follows Jane, who's Jane, and then Gifford and Gifford is her betrothed fiance slash becoming husband. So they end up getting married. It's this whole thing. There's so many different components. Again, like it was just, it's just a really funny, lighthearted, it's just a really fun concept um, and I really liked it. I think I ended up giving this four out of five stars. I did really, really like it, but there was just, I don't know, there wasn't that like final push and oomph to say I absolutely love this book. The next book that I read in April was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This, I ended up liking it, but with all the hype that surrounds this, I was expecting more or maybe I just didn't understand what it was really about because I ended up giving this four out of five stars and it wasn't that I didn't like it. It just like with My Lady Jane Grey, there just wasn't that final push to say that I absolutely loved it. Now that could be that this first book I just don't really mesh with. Like I, I don't know. I like put this down. It, it could also be contributing to the fact that I had started reading this put it like over and over again. Not because of anything that the book did, I just was not in the mood to read it really. But I will say once I that final pickup, I like flew through it, the ending, and I actually ended up really liking it. But like I said, it didn't have that final push to give it five stars. Um, I am going to be reading, or hopefully going to be reading Clockwork Prince this month and hopefully I'll give that a better rating. I did like all the introduction to the characters and everything, but it's just, it was, I don't know. I really don't. So anyway, if you don't know what the Infernal Device is about, this follows Tessa Gray and she is a human and she ends up traveling to London because her brother is there and they were going to meet up. Um, but something happens and she can't find her brother and she ends up being introduced to the Shadowhunter world. And the Shadowhunter world are the being is called Nephilim and they are, they're not descendants of angels, but they're part angels. Um, they were created by the angels to hunt demons. It kind of follows her story of like coming to terms and like finding this entire fantastical world that she had no idea existed um, and kind of how she ends up finding her place in that world. But I'm hoping that I'll like the next books a little better than I did this one. But like I said, four stars. It's good. So the next book that I read, I don't have a physical copy of it, which I need to get a physical copy of it because I really loved it. I ended up giving it five out of five stars. And that is Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo. This is a very much body positive story about a girl who struggles in a relationship with food, essentially. Um, she is plus size. She uses it as, as a coping mechanism and stuff like that. And it's kind of her story about coming to terms with the fact that, you know, she is okay. It's very much body positive. Like the way she is is completely perfect. She is perfect the way she is. Um, and it's a really sweet, it's a graphic novel and it's really sweet. And the graphics are really cool. And I love this cover. I really loved it. I ended up doing, like I said, five out of five stars. It was just, I really loved the message that it had. The graphic, like the art was really cool too. Um, and I liked the relationship that she had with her best friend and her parents. It, the whole dynamic, the whole thing, and like there's flashbacks in the story of when she's like little and it kind of, you kind of understand why she is the way she is, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The last book that I read in April was A Study in Charlotte by, a study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. This is a Sherlock Holmes retelling. Um, but it's gender bent and set in the modern world. So we follow Charlotte Holmes, who is the descendant of Sherlock Holmes, and Jamie Watson, who is a descendant of John Watson. And actually the only thing that's gender bent is Charlotte Holmes. Basically they go to this school and a murder is committed and they have to basically prove that they weren't the ones who committed the murder and that somebody is setting them up. So. It's interesting because in this book, it kind of shows how they become friends because in the beginning, they're not friends, but there's also a, like a feud between the families because it's something somebody did. I can't even remember now, but I ended up giving this 3.5 out of five stars. I flew through this. I read it as an audiobook, um, but while I really liked it and I will probably continue with it, it was just a little juvenile for me and that's not the book's fault that's just my reading taste so some of the things i was like really but overall i did like 
the story and I did like the direction that it went. It was just a little lackluster for me, but I did really like it, so. Next is the books that I read in May. I, I didn't really read much. I read two books in May. One of them physically, one of them audioly. Audioly? Through the audiobook. And um, so the first book that I read was Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. Five out of five stars. Like, I loved it this book. The ending completely destroyed me. Like, I mean, look at the amount of tabs I have in this book. It's ridiculous. It's not as much as A Court of Mist and Fury, but it's still a lot. Let's see. I have 270 tabs in here in an 800 page book. I guess is isn't really a lot when you really think about it because I have over 500 tabs in A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Mist and Fury is 624 pages. Yes, I know that off the top of my head. Sue me. But I absolutely love this book. The last 200 pages, and when I literally tell you the last literal 200 pages, I did not stop crying. I, Sarah J Maas, you destroyed me with this book. I am not, I don't think I'm gonna get over the events at the ending of this book. But I cried so many times. Again, like I said, I absolutely love this. And I, as much as I hate hate her for it and I mean hate with the most the, the terms of endearment that I can I hate the fact that Sarah J Mass made me fall in love with two characters and then ripped them out from under me I'm still not over it I just I can't I absolutely cannot wait for the next book and the next book isn't coming out I think until fall of 2021 which is way too long to wait but if it's another 800 page masterpiece like this is, I'll be a happy, happy girl. But yes, I absolutely loved this book. I love all the characters. I love um, the plot. I love all the interaction between them. And funny enough, um, when I got this book, I think I knew what it was about, but the way that the book starts it's a little confusing and it's extremely info dumpy. If you haven't read it, just know that, that the, the first about 100-ish pages is very much, she's trying to get the world set up. And I understand that she's doing that, so I didn't have a much of a problem. I know other people had a lot of problem with the fact that she just kept info dumping, but you do need to keep that in mind. We follow Bryce Quinlan and she has the perfect life. She is, you know, she's I think 23 or something like that. Um, she lives with her best friend, she works hard all day, and she parties all night, and she loves her life, she loves it. Until a demon ends up killing her friends, her closest friends, and she becomes the center of the investigation. So then it fast forwards two years, which I also wasn't expecting that, um, but it fast forwards two to two years later, and the case, they thought they had caught the guy, or the person who did it, but the case ends up being reopened um and it's kind of about figuring out who it was that killed her best friend like her closest friend she ends up meeting this angel and the angel is helping her um try and solve the murder there's a bit more to it than that um specifically because there's so many different creatures it's an urban fantasy so there's so many different creatures you know there's there's werewolves there's mermaids there's witches there's uh fae there's the princes of hell there's demons like there's so many different things um in this book and i think sarah jamas weaved them together really elegantly in a way that wasn't you know throwing it in your and all i need to say and i don't this isn't a spoiler because sarah j mass is sarah j mass but the love interest that is in this book better not be switched in the next one if it's a specific one specific character i won't be too too mad about it but i am sick and tired of being set up by sarah j mass for her again to only rip things from out underneath me and tell me you were wrong I don't want to be wrong anymore. I'll read it either way, but I don't want to be wrong. Okay, so the next book that I read in May, well, the last book that I read in May, was an audiobook, and that was Traitor Queen by Daniel L. Jensen. This is a duology. This was the second book in the duology, and I actually ended up really enjoying it. I only gave it four stars because, again, it to me, the middle was a little lacking a bit. Um, but basically, I'm not going to show you what the second 
book is but basically the first book follows Lara and Lara is one of the daughters of the king of oh god not Ithacana. I forget what the kingdom is. Oh my god, I want to say it's like Ad Ad Adrita, Adriana, Ad Adrita, something like that. But she oh. is the princess and when she was about five, her father ended up sweeping her and her 12 sisters away to this camp in the desert. And since the age of five, they've been training them as assassins and spies. And things and I think it actually started out with 20 but some of them died in between and now there's only 12. They end up sending them there because the bridge kingdom Ithacana, their kingdom and Ithacana have been fighting a feud for years and years and years and years um, and basically the king wants to end it and he wants to overtake the bridge kingdom because the bridge is basically imports and exports come out of. One day when they become of age one of them will marry the king of Ithacana and infiltrate it from the inside. Laura ends up finding out that one of the sisters will be chosen, but the rest of them are going to be killed. So in order to save them, she poisons them in a way that makes it look like they're dead so that she then can become the person because she wanted to save all of her sisters, um, but they're not dead and everybody thinks they're dead. So she ends up going and she marries the King of Ithacana and it's about her going into this kingdom and learning that the way that her father kind of portrayed the Ithacanian people um, and that it was very wrong and it wasn't as malicious and mean as they like put them out to be. So the very ending of that book leads into the events of the second book and the second book was a whirlwind. The only thing that I, I thought was a little meh was kind of the middle but the ending I absolutely loved like everything leading up to the very very end I was kind of like meh but the very very end like the fast the last like two chapters were really good and it was the reason why I gave it four stars because I would have given it three if it wasn't for that oh my god I really want to tell you what the ending is because I need to discuss it with someone because I absolutely love the way that it was executed I'll put it this way and I don't this isn't really a spoiler so Ithacana is an island and around the island there's there's storm season and then there's regular season and when it's regular season um Ithacon is very much on high guard making sure that nobody can attack them but when it's storm season the storms kind of protect them nobody dares to go um past the storms to get to Ithacana because uh there's it's just they're, they're gonna destroy their ships but around the island are sharks like they're famous for the, all the sharks that are around the island and it has something to do with that and also the snakes. There's a part of the island that is called snake something and the ending has something to do with snakes and sharks and it was done so well. It was really, really good. That's all I'm gonna say because I just really love that ending. I think about it a lot because I really loved the ending of that book. I think I've done it three times now. I've gone back and just listened to the like last part of it because it was just, to me, it was the perfect putting all the puzzle pieces together kind of ending. The next books are the books that I read in June. The first book is The Elite by Kira Kath. I ended up giving this 3.5 stars. The selection series, I said this multiple times, the only thing I'm gonna say is that it's The Bachelor for Royalty, yada yada yada. So this is the second book and the reason that I didn't really like this book specifically was because it very much focused on the relationship because it's a love triangle and it focused on the relationship that I didn't like. I'm a Maxon stan, like Maxon is amazing, Aspen can go jump off a cliff. Granted he has, he changes in the last book but in this book he's so annoying. So annoying. So I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is still one of my favorite series but I just find this book so infuriating. Not only does it focus on Aspen and America the entire time. America and Maxon are mad at each other the entire time and it's just like I don't I don't I'm not here for that. I'm not here for it. I hated it. It infuriated me. 3.5 out of 5 stars because I still do love this series and I like aspects of this book but there's a lot that I don't like. The next book that I read was Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Megan. Damn it I always do that by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi book and I read this before last year. I read this last year around the same time and I ended up giving it four stars when I first read it and I reread it this year, like obviously in June. I reread it 
and I gave it five stars. I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I gave it four stars. This book was amazing. I just, I love the dynamic between all of the characters. It's kind of like a found family, which I love. It was just so good. Like I absolutely adore this book in this series and I cannot wait for the third one to come out because I need it. The funny thing is, so the first time that I had read this and I annotated it the first time that I read it, I ended up only putting 48 tabs in here and after the second time that I read it, it had 87 tabs. So there was just, I don't know what it was, but I ended up absolutely loving this book the second time that I read it. It could have been that I was picking it up and putting it down when I first read it and it kind of took me a little bit to do it, but this, it took me two days to read this and this is like a 500, almost 500 page book. So that's telling you something. This basically follows, so it's the year 2380 and we follow six different characters, which is a lot, but essentially, so the, the one of the characters that we follow, Tyler Jones, um, he, it's the night before his graduation from the Aurora Legion and the Aurora Academy, um, where they train these kids how to like do diplomacy and um, things with all the aliens that they've found since now, like present day and that time. He is like the top of his class. He has the draft tomorrow, which is when they pick their teams for the Aurora Legion. And he has like the first five picks or something like that of the six that he wants. The night before he ends up, can't he can't sleep, so he ends up going out and he ends up finding this lost ship um, with one sole survivor on it um, that the ship <clears throat> set sail 200 years ago and that she's essentially like, she's a 17 year old girl, but she's like 237 years old because it's, you know, um, and it's kind of the story about them figuring out what the hell happened on the ship, what the hell happened with her, like why is she the only survivor, and like that. Like I said, we follow six different characters, um, and it would be a lot to explain to you each of them, but I love all of them in their own way and I think I really appreciated them more the second time that I read them because I had issues with a few of them and I only kind of really liked one of them but now I absolutely love all of them I love their dynamic I love the way that they work together yes granted I still have my one favorite character Cal he will always be my favorite but I really do appreciate the rest of them a lot more now then the second to last book that I read in June was Aqua by Sarah J Maas I didn't read this whole, th I read the majority of it in June. I ended up giving it five out of five stars. I absolutely love this series and I don't, while I see some of the issues that people have with it, I just love this series and I love the characters and I love everything about it. So I couldn't not give it five out of five stars. But, so the first book, this is a trilogy. It's essentially Beauty and the Beast retelling. But yes, I absolutely love these books. They're really good. But I'll just say that it starts off as a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it ends up growing it to a lot more. And the last book that I read in June was Aurora Burning with my baby cat on it. So cute. Um, so Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I ended up giving this five out of five stars. This follows directly follows the events of the of Aurora Burning. I have so many feelings about this book. I absolutely loved it. Um, but the ending again destroyed me because it leaves you off on a cliffhanger and I'm so mad that it leaves you off on a cliffhanger because it's like so close so close I don't know how the things that that were said in the last like three pages that I don't know how they're gonna come back from that I really don't like like that's that like I don't I can't put that in there because it's a major spoiler for the ending, but the, I'll just, just know that the last couple pages of this absolutely destroyed me. I just was screaming, I was crying, I was not in a good place reading the end of this. I also finished it like at 2 o'clock in the morning because I couldn't stop reading it. But it was just, I can't, I just can't. I can't, you can't even. I can't. I, I just, I can't. Anyway, I, like I said, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. Just one last glimpse of this gorgeous Charlie Bowler cover. Those are all the books that I read in April, May, and June. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, if you had different opinions on them. I'd love to know because I do actually really like knowing different people's opinions on books. Besides that, thank you so much for watching. Please 
comment. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!